your yachting girl. She is alive. She wants to stay with us, not to go back to her people. I say we take her traitor's heart to the chief. Ask that the warriors in black leave us be. I sleep less, but no more, thanks to you. Elena gave me this. Use it or cast it away. I do not care. I have no time for Helena's breed of peace. I have no use for Helena's kind of peace. This old mind shall remember what it can. I have spoken with Helena of Dominus and his expedition. It all sounds horribly plausible. Whether we can fully trust what she tells us, time will tell if her torn loyalties are to mend in our favor. Show me this gem from the Chamber of Sins. It has the aspect of a virtue gem like those you carry already. Yet it's clearly not made to slot into any of your standard equipment. Look at the color. Feel the energy coming off it. Malagaro had little virtue in mind when he made this thing. The Baleful Gem and Malagaro Spike. I'd wager these two grotesqueries were made for each other. A marriage born in darkness. My advice? Send them to their wedding bed, the riverbed. Hello? Welcome. It is a new day. I like this new Oriathan woman. She has new stories. Not like Eremir, who only speak of that which is dead and dust. Yes, I have many questions for this Helena. The spirit is strong in Felshrine. You touch the stones, you will feel it. They spoke to me, those stones. Told me to take their altar and to find the hand of a good man. He lived in that church, as you call it. The altar is his, and it will wake when he touches it once more. You could find the good man. Bring me his hand. When the spirit of the altar awakes, I will share it with you. I promise. Elena is healing. I make sure of that. But you want to know if you can trust her. I see her spirit. It was born good, and needs work to keep it that way. Much like yours. I gave the Ebony Legion my faith and my loyalty, and it offered me nothing but fear and death in return. Thank you for freeing me from both. I have nothing to give you but my gratitude and my knowledge. I know you have no use for the former, so let's hope the latter makes up for it. Piety would have concurred with Eremir's theory about that northwestern ruin. The Val were a powerful civilization predating even the Eternal Empire, and Piety very much wanted to see what toys the Val might have left for her to play with behind those stone doors. Yet we couldn't budge them, not with that giant of a tree holding them fast in her roots. You now carry a cure to that problem. Or rather, a useful illness. Use the spike to inject the Baleful Gem's Calibric Extantia into the roots. One day soon, Piety will find her way into that ruin. You need to get there first. The Blackguards will never stop pursuing someone they consider a traitor. I'm a danger to everyone around me and not long for this world if I can't find a place to hide. Based on what the Esmeri have told me of this region, the Dread Thicket is rumored to be a terribly dangerous and wild place. The Blackguards will never search there. Let's travel separately to avoid detection, and I'll meet you there. 
According to his notes, the Baleful Gem was a byproduct of Malagaro's attempts to enhance the already formidable qualities of Virtue Gems. It was an abject failure, yet Malagaro wasn't one to waste his atrocities. By combining the Baleful Gem with the venom extracted from one of his arachnid subjects, he brewed something called Black Elixir. He proudly proclaimed it to be the most potent poison in existence until it was stolen by a man named Victario. It was rather entertaining to read Malagaro's intentions for Victario once he caught the man. Twisted, yet I can't fault the Inquisitor's creativity. Malagaro had an assistant, a man named Raulo. If Malagaro's records spoke truly, Raulo offered himself freely as a test subject. With the spike, Malagaro injected Raulo with a high dose of calibric extantia, thus gifting the poor man with both endless life and horrific deformity. In honor of his sacrifice to Malagaro's work, the Inquisitor gave Raulo a new name, Fidelitis. I thought Dominus was a leader of vision, of purpose, the man who would resurrect the Eternal Empire. In truth, Dominus is only after power, the black... Our expedition made camp in the western forest while Piety took a few men through the pass to Axiom Prison. She was after the research notes of one Chevron of Ombra, a witch who devoted herself to the study of transfiguration during the latter days of the Eternal Empire. Piety returned alone and disturbingly happy with her findings. I've learnt that when Piety is happy, misery is soon to follow for everyone else. The Blackguards will never stop pursuing someone they consider a traitor. I'm a danger to everyone around me and not long for this world if I can't find a place to hide. Based on what the Asmeri have told me of this region, the Dread Thicket is rumored to be a terribly dangerous and wild place. The Blackguards will never search there. Let's travel separately to avoid detection and I'll meet you there. Farewell.
happening. Not in the world I know.
Greetings. Welcome to our new hideout, Exile. I'll start getting it set up. All right, I've taken the liberty of performing a few tests. There are a few magical modifications the Transmutia device can make that are safe every time. Try enhancing a piece of equipment now. Let's see if my results hold. I retrieved the Transmutia device from the Chamber of Sins, and I believe I can rig it to imbue equipment with magical modifications. This may involve minor meddling with dark forces we don't understand, but we'll have to take that risk. Rayclast is a dangerous place, and we'll never get anywhere by playing it safe. As long as we treat the process scientifically and approach it methodically, we should be able to craft equipment to our needs. Malachi himself gave this Transmutia device to Malagaro. It makes me incredibly uncomfortable to think about the horrors that it helped bring into being. But I must remind myself that science is not responsible for what happened in the Chamber of Sins. Science provides tools for mankind to manipulate the world. It is up to each of us to choose to do good or evil with the power so provided. Malagaro was the evil responsible, and Malachi before him. Together, you and I are going to start using this device to undo the damage they did. While you're out there, try to remain vigilant for other possible locations for hideouts. The Blackguards never give up, and they may eventually stray close to this place. I want to have a backup location ready to go in the event we need to make a quick exit. I was no wonder child back in Aureus, but I prided myself on what junior accomplishments I managed to put together within the strict set of allowed sciences. Archaeology was my specialty, and Dominus and his ilk had an uncommon fascination with artifacts from the past. And I... I was told I was crucial. That I was important. Because I could tell whether an artifact was truly vile simply by running my hand along faded stone patterns. I may have had a head slightly too big for my shoulders. When the Ebony Legion made available an archaeologist position on their expedition to Rayclast, and nobody volunteered. I thought my colleagues were all simply afraid of continental dangers. No. They knew better. None were allowed to speak it openly, but they knew. I didn't find out what kind of society I was truly a part of until I saw piety's aspirations. I studied the Val. I knew all about their downfall, or at least our Templar-twisted perception of it. Piety's ocean of slaughter. The Val called their hubris the apex of sacrifice. The Eternal Empire called theirs the Purity Rebellion. We call ours the Temple of Lunaris. And I know nothing, Exile. Nothing at all. Save that we are doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past unless we learn the hard way. When I first met him, I underestimated Einhar. Coming from the poorest of Ezemites, themselves already a battered people in this region of the world, Einhar struck me as someone who could contribute brawn to our cause, but not much else. How wrong I was. If anyone can decipher the dark design afflicting the creatures of Rayclast, it's him. 
I've been looking for the source of all this, an equation or overall pattern, but he's unknowingly taken an empirical approach. By learning about and understanding every single corrupted animal and the energies their blood contains, he's done more to advance our understanding of the problem than I could ever have done myself. One day, he may even solve the symptoms of corruption without ever understanding the root cause. Make no mistake, Exile, that's impressive. A humanistic brute force approach to a cosmic problem. I find Navali's state of existence curious. She is present, sapient, and capable of self-directed action. In a land where the dead continually rise as mindless monsters intent on nothing but destruction, Navali stands as a stark outlier. I suspect that she is trustworthy, only because of some Kardui essence that still remains from her life before, carrying with it honor, duty, and respect. Were it piety or dominus returning in such a form, the consequences would be unthinkable. All right, I've taken the liberty of performing a few tests. There are a few magical modifications the Transmutia device can make that are safe every time. Try enhancing a piece of equipment now. Let's see if my results hold. Things. The arena just north. That is the blood altar. It is where you will perform the ritual of sacrifice by combat. Once you have captured a few beasts, go to the altar in the middle and begin the ritual. The first ones are watching. Show them you are worthy.